Once your board layout is ready, it is recommended to analyze its power circuits with the Power Analyzer tool to make sure that tracks and polygons are within tolerance. To get started, you first need to add the power nets you'd like to analyze. Manual addition of nets is done by using the Manage Nets window, which can be accessed by clicking on the Manage Nets button. The approach for adding circuits depends on your needs. If you want to focus only on the power nets that are important in your design, you can select specific circuits by checking the checkbox next to the desired circuit name. However, you can build the entire power network step by step and simulate all the circuits at the same time. In this case, you should start with the circuit from which the power enters your board. You can use the search bar to find any desired circuit in your project. If a net was placed on the schematic without a power port element, it will be placed in the custom nets section, which can be expanded by clicking the show custom nets button. When adding a power circuit, make sure that you have correctly set the net name and reference net pair. Clicking on the arrow next to the net name will display a drop down menu where you can search for the desired circuit either manually or by typing the net name on the keyboard. After selecting all necessary power nets together with the reference circuits, confirm with the OK button. After that, a separate block appears for each added circuit, in which further configuration will be done. If a circuit is no longer needed for simulation, you can delete it by clicking on the corresponding icon. Power circuits on the board may pass through passive elements such as fuses or resistors, which will have different circuits at the edges of the component. In such a case, it is recommended to extend a circuit by including an intermediate component and its second circuit in the main circuit. The extend nets function is used for this purpose. To extend a circuit, click on the plus icon next to its name, then select a target circuit and add it by clicking add. The power analyzer only displays circuits that can be connected through a single extension component. Once the net is selected, at the bottom of the window you will see a list of components that connect these two circuits, where you can select one or more components. For each such component, you can set its voltage drop, resistance, and maximum allowable current which will be taken into account in the further simulation. If you define a wrong circuit, you can delete it by hovering over its name and clicking the corresponding icon. After specifying the desired circuit configuration, save it. After that, the components connected to the extended nets will appear in the list with the loads, and you'll be able to add them. You can see the number of defined extensions near the circuit name, and hovering the cursor will display the names of the extensions. After this step, you can start specifying sources and loads. Adding a power source can be done by clicking on the plus icon in the sources section. The window that appears displays all the possible components with their designators. Clicking on the link in the design item ID column will show the position of that component in the schematic, so you can easily navigate and select the right power supply. When you have selected the desired component, click save. In the appeared component card, you will also see a link to the position of this component in the schematic. To set the output voltage, enter its value in the component card, or go to its properties and specify it there, along with additional parameters such as output resistance and maximum currents. If desired, you can adjust the connection point to the reference circuit as well as specify additional power output circuits with the Add Out Net button. If your project uses several power supplies in the same net, they can be added using the Manage button. Removal of unnecessary components from the simulation can be performed by clicking on the appropriate icon. To add a voltage regulator module, click on the plus icon in the load section, and then select the necessary components. Note that the Manage Loads window only shows components that are actually connected to the defined main and extended circuits. So if you can't find the component you need, make sure the defined nets are correct. After adding, go to the component properties and specify the appropriate VRM type under load type. After this step, specify its output voltage, output net, and connection point to the reference circuit. When you click save, the child power net will automatically appear as part of the main circuit, ready for further operation. There can be many child nets, so you can collapse and unfold them to make your work easier. Note that if you hide the main net, the child nets will also be hidden. You can add regular loads using the same plus icon under Loads. Each load represents a component card with its current consumption value. When this value is specified, it is automatically divided among all pins of the component. If certain pins of a component consume more current, it can be taken into account in the load settings in the pin loads table by specifying the consumption for each pin. 
If any of the added components is no longer needed for simulation, you can remove it by clicking on the removal icon. Once all sources, regulators, and loads are set, you can visually view the created power structure and the position of the selected circuit in it by clicking Show in Tree on the corresponding net. To return back to the main window, click on the Power Analyzer text in the upper left corner of the workspace. Before starting the simulation, it is important to specify the correct limits for allowable voltage drop, maximum current density, and maximum via current. The voltage drop value is specified for each circuit in the DC drop limit drop down list and is calculated individually. You can either select one of the percentage values that will recalculate the allowable voltage drop relative to the voltage source, or select the custom option and specify the allowable drop value manually. The maximum current density and maximum via current values are the same for all nets because they depend on the copper geometry. To set them, use the configuration section at the top of the window. In the max current density for surface slash internal layers section, the allowable value for the corresponding layers of the PCB is specified. The type of copper used with its associated parameters is indicated below, along with the work temperature parameters. The maximum via current is specified for the minimum and maximum holes used in your PCB. The power analyzer will divide the PCB layout into meshes during the simulation process, and by default, it uses a dynamic mesh size. If you want to increase the simulation resolution, for example, to simulate a reference net that is represented by a large polygon, you can specify a custom mesh size. But note that the smaller the size, the longer the simulation time. If you need to accurately simulate the current flowing through the reference circuit, disable the skip ground option. If this option is active, the reference net will be treated as an ideal zero, allowing for you to run the simulation in a shorter time. The circuits are now completely ready for simulation. You can now simulate each net individually by pressing Analyze, or all nets at once by using the Analyze All Nets button. When the simulation is complete, all results are displayed as a scale for each parameter. The closer the simulated value is to the specified limit, the more filled the scale will be. The simulation result can be viewed directly on the board by overlaying the heat map. To do this, press show on the PCB at the corresponding circuit. See the following videos for more details on how to work with the power analyzer panel, approaches to fixing violations, and exporting the simulation report.